Hello and welcome to the Icelandic Perspective today. And we have a special episode actually. Uh, I don't know if uh, you know who I am, but my name is Valur Grettison. I'm an editor in chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. Uh, and you perhaps thought that I was just uh, taking this bum here with me for no good reason, but there seems to be a fine reason we are actually doing this together. A you, little bit. You are a journalist, like we said in the first uh, episode. Yes. Uh, investigative journalist. Mm. And you actually wrote an article about uh, Julian Assange and the investigation about the, uh, the FBI's investigation about yeah. the case. Yeah. And we're going to go over this uh, thing and perhaps per first say, tell us what your name is. Yes, Jeff Morales and so on. Yeah, no, <laughs> they nobody, were so formal. Nobody understood that. <laughs> nobody, and but it's much longer. It's actually, Bjarnar Ottur Their Alexanderson. So yeah, let's let's just tone down the confusion. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's the only man I know that actually has three names. Mm -hmm. uh, Icelanders usually have one or two names, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have our last names, of course. Yeah. Or father's names, yeah. or mother name. Yeah, I sometimes. Mean, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, WikiLeaks, Assange, uh, the, the newest development in the case, and how Bjarkbar is perhaps I don't know, like destroying the FBI's investigation. Well, I didn't <laughs> do that. The FBI <laughs> itself, I think, did that, and their star witness. That's a, that's a very good point. Mm. And we're going to talk about a very colorful character called Siki the Hacker. So here we go. Okay, just to start with, the history of, uh, of like WikiLeaks in Iceland is, mm -hmm. a, is very combined in, in a very complicated way. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps we'll just start on telling the story of how Iceland and Assange uh, or WikiLeaks are mm -hmm. connected. Uh, and then I'll ask you a little bit about the article that has been making quite the, making quite the mess all around the world, I guess. So, uh, first of all, yeah. uh, Assange, of course, came to Iceland uh, famously, uh, around 2009 and 10, mm. right? 10, yeah. Yeah, 2010, uh, and he kind of like he got a lot of sympathy for, from Icelanders. They were they were supporting WikiLeaks in many ways, mm -hmm. mostly because, of course, we had what the the, the, the banks had collapsed yeah. and like uh, Icelanders were very prepared for taking down the banksters. Yes. And the, there was the important leak also that happened here. Yes, it was actually a lot of distrust against the government. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of, of information coming out after mm -hmm. the collapse. And um, it's, 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 we always wanted more because we were finding out that these banksters were actually um, doing something they shouldn't have been doing. And they were actually convicted and, and sentenced to jail here in Iceland. But the Icelandic atmosphere has, has been after this is that we want more information. Panama Papers, fish rod, files, you name it. Mm -hmm. And WikiLeaks and, ha has and been playing a major part in, in many of these cases. And of course, in this time, when, when he was new here, mm -hmm. uh, the first time Icelanders basically heard about this WikiLeaks thing yeah. was uh, when Kristin Hrappsson, uh, now the, I think the, the, the editor-in-chief in yeah. at, at WikiLeaks, mm -hmm. an Icelander, and you've probably seen him often in the media, yeah. he actually reported about the, the Kaupthing uh, long book. Yeah, uh, a bank, Icelandic bank called yeah. Kaupthing. Yeah. And it became really notorious because, of course, uh, the, the magistrate, uh, magistrate in Iceland mm -hmm. uh, he, like slammed the injunction uh, on the loan book, so yeah. Roof, our national broadcast, could not actually report the, yes. about it. Yeah. But, of course, the loan book was at WikiLeaks and yeah. everybody could access it. And exactly. So the information was out there and yeah. Icelanders were very... I mean, in these loan books you could see the, the scandal with Altani, yeah. which was a fake... Uh, investor. A, a fake investor, exactly. Yeah, before the banks, banks were collapsing, so we're trying to, you know, uh, spike up the stock price and saying there's a, 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 a big investor coming in here. Exactly. But actually, it wasn't. So, uh, this became a criminal case, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, WikiLeaks in some ways contributed into this, uh, uh, in, into this uh, uh, atmosphere about the, when we were jailing bankers, basically. Yeah. Uh, and we, we actually did jail a lot of bankers. Yes, we did. We didn't jail them all, but... No. <laughs> there were a few but that were just pure innocent. Yeah, but we, we, got, we got the CEOs. <laughs> we got that, the CEOs, That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> that, that, we didn't get any member of staff on the floor in uh, the post, post room or something right, like that. Right, right. 
But the thing is that uh, WikiLeaks became a rock star overnight, yeah. basically, yeah. because of it. Yeah. Here in Iceland, exactly. Yeah. Not many knew what this was uh, outside of uh, Iceland. No. But uh, out of this came also a political party called the Pirate Party. Yes. Uh, you know the Pirate Party a little bit well. Yeah. You, you used to work for them. Yeah. Uh, and I will and I didn't them. know, I didn't work there. I supported yeah. them, yes, yeah. at the time. At the time, yes. Yeah. And uh, one, of, one of almost 45% of Icelanders yeah. at one time supported the Pirate Party. Exactly. So I was yeah. not, it's yeah. not like I was alone yeah. here. Half of the nation actually supported them exactly. at, at one, exactly. one point. Exactly. So uh, what's interesting also is that Birgitta Jónsdóttir, he, she is also one of the key characters in like building up WikiLeaks at yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, she and there were more Icelanders in this, but she is yeah. the key, key character perhaps. Yeah. And at uh, the same time, she was a member of parliament. Exactly. And yeah. Smári McCarthy was also in it. Yes. And he, and he also became a member of the parliament uh, exactly. for the Pirate Party. Yes. So this this all is uh, very important. But mm. at the same time, uh, there was also another leak in Iceland, right? Yeah. Uh, and this leak actually was it was interesting because we call it the milestone uh, data yeah. breach. So. Yeah. The well, milestone the, leak. Milestone leak. Exactly. Yeah. Milestone is actually a company uh, like a, what, what would you call it? Here. Uh, it's an investment company. It's an investment company. Yeah. Uh, and they basically uh, they hired this teenage boy uh, yeah. to do their uh, like uh, what IT do you call it? work. IT work, exactly. Yeah. How, tell, tell me a little bit about this. Well, he, th this is where he started. Actually, uh, according to the story Siki told me, is that he was on a plane um, and didn't mention where he was going or coming wait, wait, from. Wait. Uh, we, we, because we haven't really introduced the Siki. No. Just tell me about this teenage boy. So, well, the teenage boy is basically Siki the hacker. And, and, and um, as everybody know him here in Iceland is, but we will maybe go further into the name that really doesn't stand because, yeah, let's go further into that later. Tell me about the Milestone League. Well, the Milestone League began when he was on board this plane and he got, uh, uh, there was a guy on, in first class that had some problems with, with his computers and he was trying to fix it. And that was actually one of the chiefs uh, in, in the company Milestone. Mm -hmm. So he offered him a job as an IT tech guy. Mm -hmm. inside the company. What he did with that job, he actually stole information from them. Mm -hmm. And then he tried to sell it to the media, including, including the, the newspaper that you were working I was at, at the time. I was actually also working as a journalist at this time. Uh, and we, uh, we, he contact, contacted uh, our, our news outlet and I answered him. And we were very much interested in, in buying it. Yeah. But my editor in chief uh, said, uh, if these things are stolen, and there was a lot of paranoia also in the society yeah. at this time. This was 2010 or 11. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that uh, we didn't buy it. Uh, they, he actually offered, he wanted $900 for it at the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, another uh, newspaper bought it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I mean, they haven't like uh, said that they bought it, but yeah. it was pretty evident what happened. Yeah, well, they, uh, they printed it. They printed they it. They published it. So that was the newspaper at uh, the yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, it, it has a lot of characters, this newspaper. Uh, it, once it was like a tabloid, and it had also been pretty good investigative journalists. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what they did actually, they bought this uh, data and it, there was a lot of bad information about uh, the political party, of Indi about the independence party. Yeah. Uh, especially uh, our now uh, financial minister, mm -hmm. Bjarni Benediktsson. Yeah. And this was, this was very bad for the party. Yeah, it didn't look good. It didn't look good. Because of the sure. milestone documents. Uh, so. But what matters here is that uh, this, this teenage boy leaked the information yeah. uh, to the media mm -hmm. and it, it was published. So, uh, WikiLeaks, they, they, they noticed, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure how exactly this happened. No. But this kid called Sigurdur Thorlarsson, yeah. uh, he somehow got into connection with Assange. Yeah. Uh, and what... Uh, well, that, into with WikiLeaks. With WikiLeaks, yeah. okay. Uh, do, do you know the story or how yeah, well, this happened? Well, well he, he, he got connected to WikiLeaks and he, he wanted to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And at, at the time there were thousands of people trying to be volunteers. Mm -hmm. And what the difference was between him and, uh, him and other volunteers was basically the milestone leak. Right. So he had some, I would say, a little bit, you know, an advantage via the other mm -hmm. um, um, volunteers. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's basically, this is where it started everything for Sig. Everything, basically, with WikiLeaks. Yeah, right. But uh, he has been inflaming his, I would say, 
position inside WikiLeaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. According to the chat logs I have, he was basically a number two guy. He was mm. a chief of staff. He was uh, over the volunteers. He mm. took care of all the, um, um, I would say, uh, if finance regarding getting grants from people and, mm -hmm. and, and so on. But and, the thing, and the thing is, at this time, nobody really knew who he, who he, who he was. No, but what's no. But perhaps interesting... Yeah. I mean, it's here, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to show you a little bit. <laughs> so, oh, what, what are you lost in your own city? Or? Yeah, right. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, the dark is just not... Responding uh, to you. Responding to me. No, it's not a robot. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what happens, happens then is that he was actually interviewed by uh, BBC. Yes. As, and, that, that, and hence the name Siki, Siki the, the Hacker. Hacker. Yeah. Uh, that was the headline. And there he claimed that he was like t 11 or 12 years old. Yeah. And he hacked like government official pages, like the prime ministers uh, and such. Yeah. Uh, this was all very dubious, actually, as a reporting from BBC. Uh, he was never mentioned. There, it was said that he was a teenage boy. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, which is also like a, on a gray area to to interview a teenage boy about <laughs> something oh. uh, without uh, like confirmation of anything. Exactly. Uh, but the thing is that uh, we soon later, of course, uh, found out that this kid was uh, sicky. Yeah. Uh, but this is the interesting thing. He became what like a. Uh, he was he was doing like uh, work for the WikiLeaks. What, what was that exactly? Well, in, in the beginning, he 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 was just a normal volunteer. Yeah. And uh, he was actually just trying to uh, collect money for WikiLeaks mm -hmm. by by letting people you know by donating. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, it was a it was a, a it was not a close role, but he actually was. Uh, at the location where WikiLeaks was in England mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so on, but he had a, 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 a closed, I uh, would say, job regarding his his responsibilities. But and what, what was interesting also is mm -hmm. that he figured out that uh, people wanted to support WikiLeaks in many yes, ways. Yes. Yes. Uh, one of these ways that he figured out in in 2011 yeah. was that people were very interested in buying T-shirts. Yeah. Uh, meaning that he basically, I mean, we have to give him that. He kind of like. Uh, revived their online shop thing like well, yeah well he uh, he said that he this was his idea but according to the chat logs we have at stunting yeah. actually shows there was a, a, a canadian uh, a, a member of of, of um uh, staff not uh, not sorry not a member of staff but a volunteer mm -hmm. uh, who actually was working more on this mm -hmm. than siki siki mm -hmm. was just telling him what to do and everything and they sold a lot of t-shirts that's the yes, thing yes and in the end they, they sold t-shirts for at least what was it like twenty thousand uh five thousand the fifty thousand dollars right uh, well, yeah, a, a little bit more actually, but a little bit more. Th okay, that, that, that is the uh, that is the figure which he stole from WikiLeaks mm -hmm. was fifty thousand dollars. So what happens basically is that uh, later on, mm -hmm. when people are getting very like. Uh, uh, they were feeling that there was something wrong about Siki. Yeah. Uh, nobody really knew exactly what. Christian Hrabson was very opposed to this. Yes. We have chat logs. We even, like, in, in the book that Daniel Domscheit uh, wrote about mm -hmm. WikiLeaks, mm -hmm. you can see he, he refers to him always as a teenager in the book. Yeah. But Birgitta Jonsdottir, she also had a, a lot of trouble with this kid. And other, and other members of staff yeah. for WikiLeaks. A exactly. Yeah. Uh, so what happened is that uh, uh, he decided one day from out of the blue, as it seemed at the time, mm -hmm. to go into this house here, yeah. uh, into these doors. Uh, and what he did actually was that he met FBI informant and he told him because just uh, a few months before or, or one year before. Yeah, FBI agents. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah one, one year before, then of course WikiLeaks, they uh, had the, the biggest data leak, I think, in history. Yeah, we uh, had a lot of embarrassing yeah. uh, information coming out, but not only embarrassing, we have to remember. Actually, there was a, actually evidence of war crimes yeah, exactly. that the U.S. military had made both in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the world, it, and the world literally went upside down, yeah. and you know this. Uh, but the thing is, of course, that uh, when he went in here, he, he basically went to see FBI uh, agents, and he wanted to be an FBI informant. He said that he had uh, information about Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, and, Wiki. yeah. and such. Yeah, he actually so, went in here to prove who, who he was. Mm -hmm. He actually gained uh, a, a, a copy of Julian Assange's passport. So he actually really? made a copy of it to show the the uh, the embassy's employees. I don't know a tache for you know any government institute in the U.S. That's mm -hmm. the first character he spoke with here in Iceland, mm -hmm. and they actually took a walk. 
downtown uh, later to meet the FBI agents. That mm -hmm. meeting took place in a conference room in a hotel downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he, he, he said that he had information and 48 hours after he actually sent an email, was, was the first contact with the American government. Mm -hmm. uh, 48 hours later, we had eight FBI agent and representative from the, the oh, sorry, from the uh, prosecutors in, in New York mm -hmm. to came here to Iceland. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where everything started. Exactly. Yeah. And the takes us to the next place. Yeah. Uh, you want to go this way? Yeah. Uh, so, what happens, of course, now is that uh, uh, Wikileaks realized that they were missing $50,000. <laughs> yes. Uh, they didn't know where they were, no. and they soon found out, uh, they soon found out that, uh, uh, that uh, Siki uh, probably took it. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he didn't just take it. He actually falsified an email <laughs> that looked like it was coming from Julian Assange, and then he asked him to be transferred to his own personal bank account. And so this, he's not even a good con artist because this just went straight to his account. And this this became actually a, a court case in Iceland, and it yeah. ended up that uh, Siggi or Sigurður Ingi Thordarson, mm -hmm. like his name was then, mm -hmm. he took out Ingi for, uh, <laughs> for for further con artisting for, for further conning. In yeah, Iceland. I mean we can only guess. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that uh, uh, he was basically uh, indicted for fraud, and in uh, in, the, in the end he was uh, convicted for it. Yes. Uh, for stealing from WikiLeaks. Yeah, actually, and he confessed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's even more than that. So he he basically, if, if you look at the timing, yeah. he obviously took this money and then he ran to the FBI uh, or the US Embassy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for many reasons, I mean, you actually spoke to him, this yeah. guy, and he explained this a little bit to you. Well, uh, he, he, he had two different stories. The first story basically was which he has told earlier in interviews that he was scared that he didn't like what Lulsec or Anonymous both hacking groups mm -hmm. or you know and um, and and he didn't like the way that th this were these things were going that they were breaking the law but at the same time he was also you know dealing with uh, underage boys and conning money out of companies yeah, yeah, we'll get to that later yeah, yeah but it's 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 but then he and I just pressured him come on I heard this you know mm -hmm. before this is just a, a routine answer, like a PR answer you get, give always when you are asked mm -hmm. what really was going on here. And the furthest I got with him is that he just was scared. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to talk about what exactly he was scared of, mm -hmm. but he actually said that he just got scared. Mm -hmm. So then you have to fill in the blanks. What was he scared of? Yeah, right. At the time, uh, All you... doors were closing around him. Right, uh, around WikiLeaks at least. And well, we, not we, only WikiLeaks. And we didn't know. We we only knew like one percent of what was going on. Yeah. And we get into that a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that he went there and he was officially an FBI informant. Yes. Which is uh, definitely interesting in so many ways. Yes. Uh, but at the same time as he was becoming an FBI informant, mm -hmm. uh, few knew that uh, he was, of course, uh, a young gay man uh, in some dilemma, and he was uh, also uh, molesting or, or uh, sexually, uh, like, uh, what, what do you call it? Like abusing. Uh, abusing, basically. Yeah, uh, underage kids. Underage teenage boys. Yeah. Um, and then we were talking about, like, they were around... What were they, like 15 to 17? Yeah, four, down to 14 to, to, to 17. Exactly, and yeah. at this time he was himself like 18, 18 19. 19. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but the laws are quite, you know, strict yeah. here in Iceland regardless, not even strict, it's just this is the law. And the thing is that uh, uh, these indictments came out uh, a few years later, actually. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly enough, I mean, if you go through these uh, indictments and, and you read these court cases, yeah. uh, as we have done, uh, you can see that he often used, uh, he conned these boys often. Yes. And uh, he used the, the, like that, uh, that he was, uh, he used his power as yes. a former staff member, I guess, yeah. uh, at WikiLeaks and yeah. such, because yeah. he, he had a very notorious kind of reputation in Iceland. And he mm -hmm. used this uh, very much. Exactly. Uh, am I right? Yes, uh, we had the chat logs, actually. Yeah. Siki gave us the chat logs, which he is speaking to these boys at the time. Okay. So he's actually kind of using the power of lies, basically. He's telling them that he has millions, that he has companies in Liechtenstein and in, in, in England, and mm -hmm. all these lies, and telling them that he will give them millions, just mm -hmm. if basically these teenage boys will actually have sex with him. 
And, um, and, and we're talking about straight young boys, mm -hmm. uh, some of them in relationships, some of them not. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's, it's, you can just see how they, he's, he's always pushing. Yeah, right. Pushing more. After they say no, mm -hmm. he promises them more. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's, he's he promises them gifts, he, he promises them buy them computers. Cars and, uh, yeah. a, 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 a and, he, he, and he even promised them to erase their uh, like criminal yeah. history yeah. and stuff, yeah. like Which, hacking into the, to yeah. the police system and, and, and such. And, and sometimes threaten them yeah. to hack something, to, to put some information about them that was not correct. And this was after he was outed by, uh, by WikiLeaks, yeah. and he was, at this time he was an FBI informant. Exactly. Am I right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he was, he was doing a lot of, some of these crimes after he was an FBI became an FBI informant, and some of them before. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 he, he was on a crime spree at this period. Mm -hmm. So this is what the, the, one of these doors which were closing on her, on him. Mm -hmm. It was basically you know fraud and sexual abuse, and he continued that while he was also an FBI informant. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 you can see what kind of character we're dealing with here. Okay. okay. And um, it's it's it's. It, even in the court uh, filings, mm -hmm. you can see that he was actually, uh, uh, by a, a, a psychiatrist, he was... Um, yeah, he was appointed, appointed a psychiatrist. Yeah, uh, by the court. By the court. He had an interview with him. Yeah. And in the court paper says that his diagnosis on, on Sigurd Thorason is that he's on the borders of being a sociopath. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But so he is able to be convicted because he mm -hmm. knows, should know... The, the, the meaning between right and wrong. Exactly. But, you know, but the, the, he's borderline. Yeah. So you can see what kind of character we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. And this is the main star witness of mm -hmm. the FBI in the case of Julian Sands. But wait, wait, now things get a little bit more complicated. Oh yeah, everything is complicated <laughs> about this case. And, and, and we have to say, tell the viewers, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's like, uh, I would say almost four or five season <laughs> of Fargo. It just gets more ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's over a 10 year period. So it's, it's a uh, lot of information in, in this. And also, like, if you feel like this is confusing, how it's telling you about this, yeah. you, you can find, of course, this article in English for Stunt, from Stuntin. Yeah, Stuntin.is. Uh, uh, yeah, in, in the description below. Yeah. So uh, I want to go into the, the, like, uh, these uh, new allegations that were uh, happening. We know now that, of course, uh, Siki was uh, not the best character. No. Uh, he has been multiply, like many times, he has been convicted for crimes in Iceland, everything from, yeah. from fraud to, to, sexual abuse. to sexual abuse. He has been connected to uh, like extortion, yeah. uh, although he was not convicted in no, this No, the police case. actually investigated their case, which mm -hmm. uh, two young boys were actually then arrested and convicted for, mm -hmm. which <laughs> where uh, the scheme was to, to blackmail the biggest chocolate manufacturer here in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> and there was, they told them, they sent an email to the letter of the CEO of the chocolate company that they were going to put brake fluid yeah. in one of the chocolate pieces. Yeah. So they, they already did it, right? Or yeah, yeah. Like that. They, they said they did it, but there's yeah. no evidence they actually no. did. Yeah. But um, what happened then, they, they, they wanted money. Uh, and they told the place and time, and of course, as stupid criminals, the police were at the same time as the money was there. So they would capture these young boys. And they claimed that Siki the hacker uh, orchestrated all of this. Yes. Yeah. But he, of course, uh, he, of course, uh, denied. denied all the allegations. Exactly. Uh, meaning that, uh, that, uh, uh, that he, he was never indicted in, in no. this case. No. Uh, and, further, and of course, not convicted. No. We're going down here. Yeah. Should we go down here, Art? What do you want? We're going here. So, uh, enough of this character, uh, <laughs> but what, what's basically, why did this case come back to Iceland? Yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the case against uh, Julian Assange that mm -hmm. had been, been more or less uh, confined within first the Ecuadorian uh, embassy, of course, and yeah. later on in, the, uh, in jail, of course, in, in, in mm -hmm. England, UK. Mm -hmm. uh, the US is trying to extradite him to, to the US so yeah. they can uh, prosecute him for, uh, for not being a journalist, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, there were, there were new development in this case uh, in, what, end of last year? Yeah. Well, no, 2019. 2019. Yeah, then, then because the, the thing is here, in the beginning, in 2011, mm -hmm. they interviewed Siki, and mm -hmm. they got all this information from Siki about 
that Siki was saying that Julian Sands asked him to do all this hacking. Mm -hmm. And according to our investigation, there's no evidence except Siki's word. Mm -hmm. There's no communications on online, no chat logs, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, and that's according to our investigation. Mm -hmm. um, then and you th have a lot of chat logs. We and, have you all and, and you interviewed him, of course. But, but yeah. to tell us first about what well, is Assange exactly in that, like, yeah, uh, that, in that's like, what, I'm what coming you up want to. to. Yeah, that's what I'm coming up to. The yeah. thing is that in original indictment, mm -hmm. there, there, there are only 17 indictments, only, but it's a lot. <laughs> and that has regarded to all, only to the Espionage Act of 1917. Mm -hmm. And the Obama administration figured out that, okay, we cannot actually charge him with this shit because then we will have the New York. Uh, New York Times problem. Mm -hmm. That is, you can use this against journalists in the United States mm -hmm. for printing out um, uh, stories which came from top secret files. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we, have, have... we have this precedence, precedence uh, yeah. through the court via the Pentagon Papers. Mm -hmm. So this is just a, a dead case. Mm -hmm. So the Trump administration, they needed to figure out what they could do. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they cocked up basically Siki again in the case. Mm -hmm. So the testimony that the FBI did not want to use originally mm -hmm. came back into the indictments. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, never they were never were there, but they came inside the indictments. And then we were then we were talking about Iceland, like a teenager and in NATO, NATO country NATO, one, which NATO we are. Yeah. yeah, we are the country number one in NATO. <laughs> we actually have to have no army, but still we are <laughs> NATO country number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a little bit strange to see how this um, case evolved mm -hmm. and how this old ghost from 2011 was woken so up. So wh wh what are they saying that Julian Assange exactly did? <laughs> Here's the funny part. All the crimes that Julian Assange was supposed to have done happened in Iceland mm -hmm. and against the Icelandic government and Icelandic companies. Which was what? Which was basically hacking the Icelandic parliament to get um, uh, phone recordings of conversations of members of parliament. Mm -hmm. That is total bullshit. It, 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 the thing is, is that they say that, that Julian and Siki hacked the parliament inside the indictment. Mm -hmm. Well, Siki tells a different story to me, that actually he got this from a third party on a USB stick. Uh, the, what did he get? The, the, the audio files. Audio files of what? Of, of phone conversation between the Icelandic members of parliament. Mm -hmm. But the problem here is that uh, I asked him about this and I said, OK, did you, did you check the files? Yeah. He said no. Okay, did you listen to the files? No. Okay, can you confirm that these were these were sound files? No. <laughs> and I said, okay, so you just took the files, you put them in your computer, you didn't check them, and then you put another USB stick and got the information out, and then you handed that to Assange, <laughs> and he said yes. So it, it this doesn't make sense. Okay. So um, that's the second thing is is that he was supposed to have had. Uh, uh, the Icelandic Bank of Landsbankin to get a loan book from Landsbankin. Similar to the Cape thing loan book. Exactly. Yeah. But the problem here is that the FBI only had to, you know, ask few journalists here in Iceland because we, we only had... We only no, had... We're, we're going there. We have, we have a spot to go. Yeah? Sorry? Yeah. They only had, basically, uh, to ask these Icelandic journalists because they already had this long book, yeah. but it was decrypted. No, encrypted, sorry. And mm -hmm. they were trying to decrypt it, mm -hmm. but uh, nobody could. And of course, Landsbankin is now the state-owned bank in Iceland, yes. one of the biggest ones before everything collapsed, yeah. basically, and it's basically today also. Yeah. Uh, and it is owned by the government as, as well as our, us now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, these loan books, yeah, they were, I mean, we, uh, the, all the media had it, we yeah. had it, I had it. Yeah, I, you had I, it I, before I Siki had I, it. I tried to decode it. Yeah, and not, of course, your computer <laughs> skills are none, and uh, including Siki. Yeah, yeah. Siki couldn't de do nothing with no, it. Eh? And Siki told me they tried to get some American to uh, decrypt it with an MIT computer, mm -hmm. and that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, it, but, and then... <laughs> Then the third thing is that he was supposed, Julian Assange, have hacked uh, 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 an account of the search and rescue teams in Iceland so he could access a program where you could see all the movement of the Icelandic police. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that does not work out either because <laughs> Siki told me actually that this was his account. Yeah, and which uh, he got perhaps, from perhaps, the search and rescue. Perhaps explain a little bit what this is, because the search and rescue teams are, of course, volunteers. Yes, these are uh, people; they are not paid for anything. No, but they get uh, access to uh, to the system often 
uh, and and it used to be like very innocent in some ways. We, it's, you can only trace, and this system is to tell the search and rescuers yeah. where the vehicles are so they can pinpoint everything. And to make a, a, you know, a plan for a search yeah. or you know, a rescue. And, um, and, and the thing is that it's only blue and white police cars, mm -hmm. you know, the marked ones, mm -hmm. which are in the system. There's no uh, you know, uh, DEA officers or mm -hmm. the special forces here, mm -hmm. you know, the, the SWAT team and all undercover police cars. It's just the blue and white. Yeah, yeah. And he told me that he gave Assange this access, mm -hmm. and I asked him, did you see him use it? And he said, well, and he was kind of strange with it. First he didn't know, and then he said yes, and then he said no. And, you know, it doesn't matter. He gave them the account. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, according to the indictment, uh, you know, Julian Assange hacked the account. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, 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 and all but wait, of these. Yeah. But, yeah, but because this is, there's a pattern here, because exactly, uh, he gave it to him. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's also another thing. We're here in front of the Justice Department of Iceland, yeah. because they have a, quite a role in this. Uh, it's interesting to see, for example, that uh, uh, Assange is, uh, is sad to have asked Siggy, the mm. hacker, to uh, contact uh, notorious hackers, like yeah. Lulsek, like, uh, ba 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 what was the name in uh, uh, Lulsek and, uh, and, and Sapu, Sapu, which is a member Sapu. of Lulsek, and exactly. Kaila also, which is and a member of uh, Lulsek. All very famous and notorious hackers, uh, very international, uh, like, yes. and, and high profile. Yeah. But the thing is, he did definitely uh, talk to these people. Oh, Am yeah, right? we have the chat logs. Yeah. We, we have the information and the conversation yeah. between uh, Sikke and Sapu, yeah. Sikke and Kaila. But not the sons and these characters. No. We okay. don't have those chat logs. How are these chat logs? You, you printed them, of course, in yeah. the in the, uh, in the, the Icelandic story. Yeah. yeah, we printed some of these, but we have them, and we're going to do some more uh, publishing of mm -hmm. these records. And uh, you can see that Sikke is pressuring these guys to attack uh, Icelandic institutions and Icelandic companies. Mm -hmm. uh, either, for example, they're trying to do so-called DDoS attacks mm -hmm. to take down the website or take down the server. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked them to try to break into parliament to get access to the emails of the Icelandic members of parliament. Mm -hmm. He tries to break into the city of Reykjavik to get some information there. And, 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 uh, and, and, and many, many more. And, you know, he accomplishes very little. Not much, mm -hmm. but he, able, he was, was able is, to take this is, down. And, and this is all happening within this one year. He was a volunteer yeah. for yeah. Assange and WikiLeaks yeah. uh, in 2011. Yeah, and I, 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 I always asked him, I, uh, repeatedly, I asked him, did Julian Assange or any member of staff or volunteer of WikiLeaks ask you to do this? Mm -hmm. And he said no. To flat out no. Flat out no. This you, have, you have this in all uh, the, records. Of course, we have. I have mm -hmm. not, I interviewed this guy for almost nine hours. Mm -hmm. So I have have all these on, on, on recording, which we will publish later. Mm -hmm. But uh, then tell me, like, because uh, what's very baffling for me, at least as, a, as an Icelandic journalist, mm. uh, why didn't the Justice Department or the police investigate that uh, there was an Icelander inciting uh, uh, most dangerous hackers in the world at this time mm -hmm. to uh, attack Icelandic infrastructure? Has there been any investigation against uh, Julian Assange? No. We have no, uh, nowhere. We, we even, the lawyer of Assange here in Iceland actually asked all the departments here in Iceland that has something to do with law enforcement. They includes the, the, the police here in Reykjavik area, the National Police, the Justice Department, and asked them if he was in any kind of, of, of any police system that he was investigating, mm -hmm. or, or even had some occurrences with the police. Yeah. None. Yeah. It's zero. Yeah. So the thing is that there was no investigation of Sikki. Mm -hmm. There was no investigation of Julian Assange. Mm -hmm. This was all a cover-up. But then again, there, there were, there, there were uh, perhaps to go here, yeah. perhaps, uh, there was uh, an attack. These hackers yeah. surely did attack Icelandic interests. Yes. Am I right? Yes, they did. They did yeah. DDoS attacks. Uh, what did they attack? They attacked, for example, the, the, the website of the industrial ministry. They mm. attacked uh, the company of Lundsnet, which actually takes care of, our, uh, of moving electricity through the country. Mm. All, the, all of these homepages were then... Did Siki uh, mention them in his uh, conversations? Yeah. Yes. With these hackers? Yes. With okay. Kyla, for example. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and, and it's, 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 you can see that they do... The, I mean, DDoS attacks are not difficult to do. You do them with bots. Yeah, yeah. But, you, you know, you have to have a certain skill, of course. Oh, yeah. But the, the thing is, they, they, these attacks happened. Yeah, yeah. When I asked 
the government about if these attacks happened. They had no idea mm -hmm. because this is so long time ago mm -hmm. and there was no investigation of it. At the time? At the time. Okay. So because the, the service only went down from maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 we, the, all these cases that all so these we, crimes we are, the, a, we are the victims we are the victims but we have never investigated nothing this. okay and according to the 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 basically the um, immunity agreement mm -hmm. we're wait ag immunity agreement yeah. we need to go with that specifically yeah. okay so uh the thing is he of course became an fbi informant in 2011 or 12 yeah uh and then the, he went through this like through these interviews with fbi yeah. uh, both in the u.s Denmark also, yeah. uh, which is, there are a lot of questions there actually, right. like if they were allowed to be there, because exactly. when the FBI agents came to Iceland, yeah. what did the, the, uh, the Department of Justice do at the time? Well, th this is also the funny part. The, the, to gain access to a different country, mm -hmm. uh, the FBI has to get, be allowed by the country to uh, exercise any police work in the country itself. Mm -hmm. So they asked the Icelandic government for permission, but mm -hmm. not to interrogate Siki or investigate WikiLeaks. Oh. They said there was an incoming cyber attack. Which was true, I guess. No, they, there was, that's the thing. Okay. There, there was no cyber attack being planned in any of the conversations that we have. Okay. There was no cyber attack that happened. And even I did an interview with the former Ministry of, of in Interior, yeah. which actually was over the police at the time and the Justice Ministry. Yeah. Was on, yeah. And he said there was none. There was no evidence of any attack, mm -hmm. which they said there was guaranteed planned attack against Iceland and Iceland infrastructure. Yeah. So that was a complete lie. <laughs> so the only reason why they came here yeah. was to interview Siki and also to do basically the, the, the investigation of, of, of Julian Assange's wickedness. And when, when Omentur, uh, our minister, found out that this was happening, exactly. but not what they said in the beginning, exactly. what happened? They, he basically threw them out. He said, you lied to us, basically. You're not investigating this cyber attack, you're investigating WikiLeaks. And illegally, you cannot be here because you didn't ask for the permission <laughs> to do that. So he, he kicked them out. But still, after he was kicked out, he actually saved... Uh, yeah, let's do it at the uh, Yeah, let's go over there. Yeah. He actually let's then... Give the people some view while we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> after the FBI was kicked out formally by the Ministry of Interior or the Justice Department of Iceland, mm -hmm. They stayed here for five days interviewing Siki. Yeah, without permission. Without permission. Mm -hmm. And they but, thought that was just fine. But that was not the end of it when it came to the Department of Justice, because Ómedur Jónarsson, of course, quit being a minister in 2014. Yeah. Uh, and then the FBI came back, right? Yeah, back in two, uh, they came back in 2019 under the Trump administration yeah. that they really wanted to push the case yeah. up again. Yeah. And they were going to use Siki's testimony. So they got, actually, they were allowed by the Icelandic government mm -hmm to come here to specifically interview Siki. Yeah. And they were in... in, in uh, who, the, who, was the, who was the minister at, at the time? That was Thordis Kolprum. Okay. And she's now basically the minister, minister of, of uh, tourism in Iceland. Yeah, right. And industry. Um, and um, she actually gave FBI the permission to come here yeah. and the FBI wanted to, to cooperate with the Icelandic police. Okay. I can tell you the full cooperation of the Icelandic police and the FBI. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the city came into the police headquarters of the Reykjavik police or the Reykjavik capital area police into interrogation room where there were two police officers right, from Iceland. Yeah. And they asked five questions. Okay. What's your name? What's your b b date of birth? Where do you live? And so on. Yeah. Only information just to see if, who was there. Yeah, if it, it was a truly the man that they were talking to. Yeah. Um, basically, after these five questions from the Icelandic police, mm -hmm. uh, they moved him to another room where the FBI, FBI agents and members of the, uh, the I think it was the time of Virginia's prosecutors uh, were inside the police office station yeah. and they interviewed him regarding the WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that, that's that's basically. So what what they they struck a deal though that this is the time they struck a deal with yes, the hacker, right? Yes. They, because he he, asked, he became uh, immune basically. Yes, he asked at that time with his lawyer, yeah. which he later then forged. The, his own lawyer's signature in a, in a con case. Yeah. Um, he made an agreement with the FBI that he would have to get immunity deal if mm -hmm. he would testify. Mm -hmm. So the FBI granted that. 
And what is, did this immunity deal entail? Well, it entailed that the FBI would not share any information that they have about Sikhish crimes with the Icelandic police. So crimes... Or any are... other uh, police uh, organization in the world. So the crimes that they are actually going to try to indict him for, these hacker crimes, yeah. which is uh, basically the only ones that could maybe stick uh, when it comes to uh, all of this case, yeah. uh, then, uh, I mean, we, we are not allowed to know anything about it, no. although we were the one that were yeah. actually attacked. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the Icelandic minister just said yes to this. Or did they have anything to say about it? No, they haven't. They, the, the, the new, or basically now, the Minister of, 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 of Justice here in Iceland actually went into Parliament and said that she could not uh, respond to any question regarding this case yeah. because it was still being investigated. <laughs> so, but that, yeah. the strange thing here is that it's already been been uh, um, prosecuted in this case, so there's no investigation still uh, going on. And the former uh, the, the minister of department uh, of justice department, yeah. he actually pointed this out. That yeah, he like, said that in the interview with me that yeah, the, you like, know it doesn't make sense. So we haven't had any comment from the FBI, the DOJ, the Icelandic authorities, none whatsoever on this article. They have not uh, uh, disputed it. They have not asked for uh, any any anything that should be you know. Uh, changed in the article mm -hmm. it still stands now almost now three weeks after it's been published mm -hmm. so i mean they have a serious problem with this case mm -hmm. and no you you uh, you wrote this case it's a very detailed article uh, yeah. at least in icelandic of course yeah uh, you, you're going to do more english stuff uh, yeah. for for uh, your readers mm -hmm. uh, but the, the english there is one english article of course which is, which is excellent yeah uh, and, and it explains this pretty well yeah. but tell us a little bit about the reactions uh, from this article well it's, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting bigger every day, basically. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are a small publication in Iceland. So, uh, you know, the most, I think many people are saying, well, the big media is not covering this and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 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 we're a small publication in Iceland. So I, I have to give my, my colleagues abroad a little bit of space yeah. to, to get this, to read this, to get the background, because this is a huge case. Mm -hmm. So, you, and you have to have everything right. Mm -hmm. But we have had interest from uh, a, a lot of major news outlets in Europe mm -hmm. and um, and some sm smaller ones in the US but mm -hmm. it's it's just a working place so I, I don't think anybody is trying to not publish this mm -hmm. it's just you need to get this correct because it's so important to have it right but what's been interesting there has been development afterwards which is for example in the German Parliament uh, yeah. the Australian Parliament uh, tell us a little bit yeah, about that. Uh, exactly. Basically, the members of, of, of every party in the German Bundestag or the German Parliament has actually demanded that Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, would do something about this. Mm -hmm. uh, except what, uh, the uh, alternative for Deutschland, the, the right wing extreme party. <laughs> yeah. And Australian members of Parliament came also uh, and said they, that, that Biden need to, needs to do something about this case. And you have also now even Icelanders, members of parliament, uh, trying to, they're collecting now signatures mm -hmm. uh, from the members of parliament here in Iceland. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we're getting, the, the, this case is actually getting a lot of support that Biden should do something and actually just release Assange and mm -hmm. drop these. Well, so, uh, but the case bec just becomes weirder and weirder because uh, Assange is, of course, still in British uh, jail for no good reason. Yeah, high uh, security, actually. High security. Prison. Uh, he, the, the, the members of the parliament in the UK are very uh, annoyed because yeah. he's not allowed to meet anyone uh, and such. Yeah. Uh, although he, the, it's very unclear what, he's, uh, uh, what, what the Americans want with him. Yeah. And also, uh, Americans had like, this very odd uh, offer that the New York Times actually... Uh, Published uh, now, uh, published today. today, exactly, mm -hmm. about this Australian, that he could actually do his time in, in Australia. Yeah. Given that he would, I would do any time. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about I it. I mean, it's 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 really strange. I mean, we we had uh, sources that told us exactly that they were trying to make a deal with Assange, actually, and 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 trying to just try to let him make a deal. But now this new thing that New York Times actually have printed and published is that the U.S. government says that if he admits to some of these crimes, which is basically the hacking crimes, he will do his time in Australia. 
So it's a little bit of a shift, mm -hmm. as we can see here. But they really want him in the US because they want him to testify who gave them the emails, for example, for Hillary Clinton, and so on. So it, 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 it's, as I said in the beginning, one of the most complicated cases I think I ever worked on. So this is, uh, you can all read this, of course, uh, in Stuntin uh, at, at their, at their uh, at uh, the new site. Yeah. Uh, you can also, of course, find it at grepan.ir, but the, the, the Stunton article is, is excellent, so please go there. Uh, uh, perhaps, I mean, this case is, of course, very confusing in many ways. Complicated. Sig complicated, yeah. exactly. And, and Siggy the Hacker is, is a very complicated character. There's almost just a series of, of, of new newscasts like this just to explain uh, all of his involvement. And the, the most interesting thing is that Icelanders knew exactly the thing what was up with this guy. He's been a very well-known, like a career criminal, this kid, since uh, 2011 or 12. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's absurd that uh, nobody have heard this before, because this is no news for Icelanders. No. Also, He's still enough, conning today. Yeah, and also interestingly, which is basically that uh, he, he admits that he lied to FBI in a conversation with you. Am I right? Well, he, he's, he, his version yeah. is completely different what FBI says. Okay. So that, here is the difference. So either he is lying or mm -hmm. the FBI is lying. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, you cannot match mm -hmm. the story he tells me mm -hmm. and what actually is uh, in the indictment. And what matters here is that FBI, their, their, uh, their theory is that he like, controlled Siki the hacker yeah. and asked him to do all of these uh, felonies. Yes, and I, all, the, all the times I said, sometimes I said, asked them, yeah, did Assange ask you to do this? Sometimes it's yes, sometimes no. Mm -hmm. and always when I said, did he ask you to do this? And he said, yes, it was only between them two. No chat logs. We're talking about uh, yeah, a, a company that yeah. everybody talks online yeah, on these right. on these things. We, and, and there's no witnesses, there's nothing. Only mm -hmm. under the, the four eyes in the room. Mm -hmm. That's it. So we, the testimony basically, legally, as many legal experts has pointed out, it's a hearsay. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence to back it up. Mm -hmm. So we have that problem. Uh, go check out uh, this article, of course. Uh, also, yeah, uh, remember, of course, to like and subscribe. But I want to tell you also that uh, me and Bjartmar, of course, we are, uh, although we're journalists and we're a busy man, uh, that we actually, we're going to try out this summer to have like a tour uh, where people, a walking tour. A walking people. tour through Reykjavik yeah. City because a lot of people are coming into our, your offices yeah. and, and disturbing <laughs> and want to meet us and, and talk to us. So we yeah. wanted to... And we're going to take her with us, of course. And Polly will also be yeah. with us, which seems to have went in the ocean. <laughs> um, uh, she will might do that in a in walking. But we want to uh, show people basically uh, the Icelandic perspective of of Iceland yeah. and Reykjavik. We want, and to, we want to tell you like tell you about the big ideas, uh, and we're going to show you some places and just talk about uh, like what, what is an Icelander, what makes an Icelander. Exactly. So <laughs> it, you know, it's 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 an intellectual communication between actually kind of intellectual people also in the crowd. Uh, there is nothing intellectual intellectual about you. Yeah, that's true. Nothing, absolutely nothing. But we we wanted to start this tour because a lot of people were asking us to meet up and yeah. join them and show them around and so on. So you can you can go on the Grapevine, Grapevine website and you can actually book us. You can also just find the link down here in the description yeah. uh, and uh, and uh, just book us and meet us. We, it's two hours, uh, it, it costs, but uh, then again, we're busy guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time. We're, we're poor journalists. <laughs> yes, we're poor we're, journalists. That's a better story, right? Yeah, there's a much better story. <laughs> See you later and thank you for watching. Thank you.